Tad Schechter, for the people who uh, don't know me, I'm the chief engineer for the Corvette. So coming into the seventh generation car, we look to extend the Z06 uh, legacy, incorporating more of what customers had told us, uh, listening to them over the last nearly uh, decade. Uh, they really want to have their cake and eat it too. So they really want uh, everything about a Z06, all the performance, and the things that we had withheld from them before, things like a convertible version, things like uh, automatic transmission. So for the seventh generation car, we really wanted to just let them have it their way. So we basically let the people option it up exactly uh, as they want. And because of that, because we wanted to do an open air version, even though we were gonna have a track oriented car, we had to design the aluminum structure, the new aluminum structure for the seventh generation car thinking specifically about this car, the Z06, and specifically about the Z07, the highest performance variant, the track version, and the loads that that track uh, chassis puts into the aluminum frame were the loads that we had to be thinking about when we designed the aluminum frame, even though we introduced it uh, last year. So that aluminum structure was really designed for the car that we're introducing uh, right now. So we really took a lot of technology and tried to apply it such that we could give our customers uh, the best of all worlds. We published the performance numbers, big step up uh, from previous generation cars, the automatic transmission under three seconds, 0 to 60, 2.95 seconds. So I think that's, this is the first time anybody with a front engine car, rear wheel drive, has broken uh, three seconds. And it's very easy to do, you just stomp on the gas, you don't need launch control, you don't need anything, just stomp on the gas and go, and uh, you're three seconds, 0 to 60. Uh, 1.2 G's uh, uh, cornering, uh, highest we've ever measured and uh, based on third-party third assessments since we had the cars out there being tested, uh, has set uh, cornering records uh, for production cars at a number of outlets. And uh, braking, same story, uh, 60 to zero in uh, under 100 feet. Uh, you'll see some people uh, posting uh, shorter distances, they take out the reaction time, uh, that makes it a little bit shorter. Uh, have set production car records there too. Um, if you look at the car and driver test, Casey Caldwell in his testing notes uh, tells uh, the readers that they actually tested more than their normal stopping distances because they uh, stopped the test because they believed the instrumentation was faulty. Uh, they didn't believe the numbers they were getting. The stopping distances were so short, they did two stops under 130 feet, uh, 70 to zero, Never seen anything like that, so they stopped recalibrating the instrumentation and repeated it and got those same uh, results. So if you look in the fine print at the bottom of that car and driver article, you see uh, that's that's how good it is, uh, smashing the, the previous uh, production car record. Uh, one of the fun facts uh, that I like that uh, in kind of daily driving is important is uh, you really have to be careful when you hit the brakes in this car to look in your rear view mirror because nobody else uh, can stop as quickly uh, as you can. Uh, inside the 60 to zero stop, if you look at the deceleration from 25 miles an hour to zero miles an hour, you do that in 180 inches. 180 inches is the length of the car, so you can imagine going from 25 miles an hour to a dead stop in the length of the car. Uh, it's pretty impressive.